So today on our broadcast, what we're gonna do is be showing you upper back and neck techniques that you can use on your clients that you can integrate into your practice seamlessly. I want you to understand that to get your free CE credit, you have to go to Teachable. After this live broadcast, I'm gonna make sure there's a link down below that you can click on that will allow you to go and take a five question test, I think, and go ahead and kick out your certificate. I'll make sure to post that after the fact so that you have access. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact me. What I'm gonna do is simulate how my session flow looks when I'm working with someone on a table. What that means is our lovely model, Heidi, um, I'm gonna be working with her and talking about upper back and neck pain. Typically what happens is I will have paperwork. I will take a quick glance at their paperwork to see if they're having any major issues. And then the first order of business is I will actually make eye contact with Heidi and go, Heidi, what are you dealing with? Upper back and neck pain. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, yeah. like, yes. So upper back and neck pain. And then nine times out of 10, what people will generally say, this is just a broad, you know, 80 percentile of the people I would work with would say they have upper back and neck problems. And they'd say Tightness. it's right up here. Most people, it's just from working at a computer. It's just from sitting and slouching forward. When I was in massage school, when I learned Swedish and deep tissue, the first thing they did was I would put her face down in the face rest. I would work on her paraspinals in the upper back and she would feel better for about an hour. When she would come back the following week, she would report that to me and I would go, I don't understand why, like I'm doing what I was taught in school. Why is it not helping her with the problem that she came in with? And here was the core issue that I had to figure out on my own and sort of deconstruct. The problem was not in the back. That was just where she was feeling pain. The problem was in the front. The challenge I had as a male therapist at 25 years old was how do I work on women and get near breast tissue without causing some sort of issue? Because I have to make sure that she feels safe to be able to deliver the session and I have to be able to open up the chest, but I have to do so in a way that makes her feel safe, makes her feel protected. How do I do that? The way that I eventually did that was changing the body mechanics completely. When I started learning mat-based Thai massage is when things opened up and I looked at it from a different perspective. What that means is I'm gonna wind up working on Heidi, not prone, not supine, but sideline. Sideline is the position that massage therapists will use in my experience the least. It's also the position that I will get the most benefit the most quickly out of a client who has upper back and neck pain. And I'm gonna go over that in detail in this hour. So in Heidi's case, do you have more problems on the right or the left? Right. Okay, go ahead and lay down on your left side. Okay. I want a pillow that's gonna allow her to be with her neck at almost neutral. If this pillow was any larger, it would probably lift her head up, like closing down this space. What I want is a little bit of length where she's essentially at neutral. I'm also gonna stack her hips and bring her forward like this. How does that, Heidi? Okay, I'm gonna take a blanket and go ahead and give her a little bit of an additional bolster just so that feels more comfortable. Can you lift your leg for me? Now, the verbiage I would use with clients is the following. I worked at a chiropractor's office. The people have come in asking for a massage. The first thing I would do is say, hey, where do you feel pain? They say upper back and neck pain. And what I would do is say, hey, lay down on the table just like you are. I wanna move you around to see where we're gonna work. The clients never fought me. They would experience maybe two seconds of like, wait, what? And I'm like, listen, you're completely clothed. I want you to lay down just like you are so I can move you around to see where we're going to work. That completely eased the transition into table tie. The reason why is because I didn't introduce any cultural artifacts. I didn't introduce any impediments. I didn't start talking about why I work differently. They just laid down and I go, Heidi, listen, are you having problems right up here? Yeah. Okay. And then does it move more towards the back, like in the shoulder blade? Yeah. 
Okay, and then generally, like, how, how low does it go? Does it go down further towards, like, your mid-back? Yeah. Or is it inordinately ticklish? It's ticklish. It's ticklish, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to use a broader structure because that was ticklish. How's that? Better. There we go. What I would start to do is I'm establishing contact with her. I'm creating a little bit of space and already beginning the process of opening up the chest. She feels completely safe, uh, safe, completely comfortable because she's clothed. Now, I want you to understand that if she was draped, I could still do this, but in my experience, I actually get more out of having her in a position where I can mobilize her effortlessly and not have to worry about whether she's draped or not. From here, here's what's gonna happen. If I bring her open, how, do, how does this feel, Heidi? Okay. And I'm acting like I've never worked with Heidi before, but we've worked together plenty. So do you like that position? Like when I roll you open, does that feel good? Yeah. Okay. What I'm doing is just demonstrating how I'm gonna make contact with their body. I'm very quickly gonna do the following. In massage school, you're taught not to make passive contact with the client. I think your school is teaching you backwards and I'm gonna change that. I'm going to actually make passive contact with the client because I'm gonna sit on the table just like this. Now, the reason this works so well is Heidi feels safe, she feels secure, and when I get this arm drape here, when I pull back, she knows that my body is blocking her falling off of the table. I'm going to start by jostling this shoulder blade and trying to open the shoulder blade off of her rib cage and upper back. The shoulder blade's only bony attachment is at the clavicle in the front. The shoulder blades are supposed to float on the thoracic spine. They're supposed to float on the rib cage. Is that too much pressure? Mm -mm. Okay. Now you can see I'm not straining. I'm just having a little bit of reinforced contact with my finger pads right into the thoracic paraspinals. It's also into the rhomboids between the shoulder blade and the spine. Right in there. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm going to add complexity, we've got this simple movement. What if I start to cross fiber friction a little deeper, right? Yeah. Okay. Not too much. Yeah. Now, if I get to the point where my fingers start to get tired, I'm going to take them out of the equation. I'm going to get a grip here and I'm going to lengthen and traction again. So if I gave you a choice, here, Heidi. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer the pressure down towards your tailbone or if it's back behind you? Mm, back behind. Okay. So I'm going to give her that option. In this case, I'm actually going to hook under her shoulder blade and start to roll her back and open. You'll notice again that she's rolling into my leg. She's clothed. She's safe. I'm essentially unwinding that rounded forward posture that we see in clients so often. And I'm doing so by mobilizing her. What about there? There we go. Now I can go back with the fingers. As I go a little bit higher, there's a little more tension, right? Oh, oh, there, there. I sometimes moan and groan for the clients. It saves them a lot of energy. I think they tip me because of that. I also didn't set a timer, so somebody will have to let me know what time it is as we get close to our hour. I don't want to run that time. Right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, again, you're never going to compromise your hands and arms. I want to be able to work on this effortlessly. If you get tired of working along the thoracic spine, because I have her in this position, I will also work on people's rotator cuffs. This is a little bit more shoulder, but I just want to change it up for a second because we're in this, what I consider a primary position. So here's the thing. I'm right up against Heidi. How does this feel, Heidi? Fine, secure. Secure. Generally, I would say clients say it feels warm, it feels nurturing, it feels supportive, um, it feels intimate. 
but she's completely clothed, I'm completely clothed, there's a barrier here. So if I decided I can wanna go ahead and work into the shoulder blade, what I'm gonna do is hang out, I'm gonna take a flat fist and work right into her rotator cuff, primarily infraspinatus. But depending on the angle, you might be getting into teres major, teres minor. If you don't know those muscle names, go to Google. Say, hey, hey, Papa Google, teach me teres minor. Right in there, am I killing you? You're only wincing a little bit. I'm glad we don't see that on camera. It makes it look that my work is exceptionally pleasant and wonderful. <laughs> right in there. Now, using this uh, broad structure, you can imagine if I went in with fingers, very sharp. Um, a lot of people can't take that, so I tend to start with this broad fist. It also gives me a chance just to relax my fingers and my hand just easing my own body's strain. What I will tell students again and again and again is, everything I developed was to help people out of pain quickly and easily. And two, I had to ease my own body strain. When I could do work that was the most effective for them for pain relief, and the most effective for me to ease my body strain, that X marked the spot. I cared not about tradition or culture. I just kept trying to make the work better and trying to make it more effective. How's that right there? Yeah. There we go. So my arm is getting tired. I was using my deltoid muscles. I'm gonna shake it out for a second. I'm gonna go right back into this guy. How's that? There we go. I'm gonna hook under the arm again. Right there. I'm gonna trick her into letting me stretch a little bit. Ugh. If I want, I can hook into the shoulder blade again and still to the back is best. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right in there. Right in. How's that? Good. Okay. Do you like this pull over the deltoid? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we're going to add uh, some complexity here. So we've opened this up. You can see very quickly, my quick guess. How long do you think we went? 10 minutes? Maybe. Maybe. Now, if I flipped her to the other side, that's 20 minutes. If she had an hour massage, what I did is I just saved myself 20 minutes of hand strain. And the clients didn't say it was less effective. The clients said it was way more effective. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to roll her arm open. And I want you to be mindful of this. Now, how's this pressure here? Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stand. I'm actually gonna hook my torso right here so I can roll her open. There we go. Now, do you mainly feel that up here in the shoulder or is it more like in the chest, spine? Mm, I feel more in the spine. I more guess. spine, okay. In a good way. Right there. Now, you like that twist, mm -hmm. okay? I'm gonna shake out her arm to give her a little bit of traction. And this is where the work starts to get more interesting. The table tie that I teach is primarily using mat-based body mechanics in a different environment, which means on the table. So here's how we're gonna give her a deeper twist. I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna slide off my shoe, which you'll notice I don't have my shoes tied. Uh, very rarely would I wear shoes that are laced because it makes this much more difficult. I'm gonna slide my shoe off and I'm gonna support her with my foot right at the sacrum. As I traction here, she knows she's not gonna fall off the table because I'm blocking with my foot. How's that? There we go. I've also got multiple points of contact and traction here. I'm not just grabbing at the hand and having her separate at the wrist. I'm grabbing just above and then also tractioning skin here. If I feel like I can reach far enough, I could also reach up to the shoulder. I'll usually give her a stretch and then back off. And here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna give her a little bit of jostle with my foot right here. How does that feel? Yeah. Good, loves it. Exceptionally easy on my hands. It's just a very different way of working than what most people think of when they think massage. I'm gonna slowly use the ball pad of my foot on the right side of her spine. I'm gonna hook right there and pull her into me. She doesn't have a huge amount of tension there. I'm gonna move just a little bit higher. 
near the shoulder blade right there. How's that? There we go. Now, if I want to add, since she's a massage therapist, I can add some of this forearm work in. I'm going to turn her just a little bit. I'm actually going to... So now, what am I working on? Am I working on her hand and arm? Am I working on her back? Or, are you with me? Am I working on the pec and opening her chest and getting that tissue used to unwinding and being open? I'm actually going to traction through her fingertips here gently. And then with my foot right there, I'm going to hook right around the shoulder blade. How's that? Good. There we go. Right there. It's almost like I can feel the beginnings of her shoulder blade, almost wanting to roll around the ball of my foot right there. Not quite, but almost. That little bit of jostle and then back off. She took a big breath. Now, we've done that several times. I'm going to slide my shoe back on, which is why these unlaced guys are good. I'm going to place her back at neutral and I get my handy dandy pillowcase. That was flashy. That was nice. Looked like I yanked a uh, tablecloth. So this is the next piece in our amazing work because I'm going to make her feel more safe and protected as I go into her pecs. Now, what I'm going to do is gently roll her open right here. I'm going to place this over her chest. And before we were rolling her open much more than this. She feels comfortable, relaxed, open right here on this side. I'm going to come back in with her arm open. And now I can go down towards breast tissue, towards pec and pec minor. But she's not only clothed, she's even more covered than before. If I don't want to use my hand here, you can easily come in with a broad forearm. And I'm going to change her arm position here so she's got some support. I don't want to feel like I'm hyperextending her at the elbow or torquing her shoulder joint in a way that feels uncomfortable. Her facial expression tells me that she feels totally comfortable here and right there. Now, when I hook and go up or hook and go down, which direction? The up, okay? So you tell me when. Right there? That's where it starts. Yeah. Okay. If I lift my knee right there, how's that? That's fine. What if I roll your arm just a little bit? Too. There we go. Now, do you want pressure to the back or to the front? Right. Right in there. She's having me get into pec minor. I can tell <laughs> by her response. Pec minor goes from the coracoid process. This is where I'm going to impress you and make you think I'm smart because coracoid, I believe it means crow or raven in Greek. It's the beak, the coracoid process. Uh, it sticks out and it's where the pec minor goes down in a fan into three points onto the ribs here. It's notoriously ornery to get to. This is not sharp. It's not the point of my elbow. I've softened it even more because I'm using this broad structure right here, right in. And I'm actually going to scoot up just to give her a little more support, a little bit less twist. How's that? There we go. I'm going to hold her arm right, ooh, right there. How's that? Okay. Now the pressure is still up yeah, and so a little forward. She's like, yeah, I'm trying to act like that's comfortable, Robert, but it feels like hell. <laughs> <laughs> Problem area. So if I bring your arm up or down, any real difference? And I'm just, I'm just playing with this additional piece to see what's going to work best. Why are we keep beeping? That's a gimbal. Is it going to stop doing that? Um, it's all the movements. I don't know. <laughs> it's hurting just as much. No, it's fine. It just keeps beeping. So I'm going to hook right here. Give me a little more space with her arm. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. Is it too much? No. Okay. Now this sort of passive body contact, I want you to be aware of this. This is not look like most people think of massage. 
I can guarantee you when we finish this, her right and left side are gonna feel hugely different because of this. If I give you some more to the front. No, more up. No, Cairo Vicente, that's what you, Cairo, that little kid, that's what did it all right there. That little baby. It's all your fault, Cairo. Cairo, <laughs> years from now, we're gonna watch this video. It's your fault, baby. All your mom's tension. Lucky he's cute. Oh, lucky he's cute. He wears a little helmet. You just protecting his head with that? <laughs> that little flat spot we got around out. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so right there. I'm gonna back off for a second because we were there for a little while. We were kind of teasing, joking. I'm gonna take this off and give her just a second to sort of unwind uh, from what we just did. How's that there? Cool. I'm gonna come out towards her arm just to jostle her a bit. This is mostly just a transition to the next thing we're gonna do. We've really opened uh, some of this up. You can see how we worked a lot of this area. You notice that we're still in sideline. Do you notice that most massage therapists spend 80% of the time in prone and supine? Oh, sideline is really, really potent. It's one of the first things I teach in my table tie classes because the therapists are completely changing the physics that they deal with to be able to help people in pain quickly and effortlessly. I'm going to bring her arm down and this right here. Ooh, ooh, how's that? She's like, that's enjoyable, Robert. It's everything I've ever wanted in them. Ow. So this right here, this junction uh, between the shoulder blade and the neck, uh, the cervical thoracic junction, sounds much more professional when you say it that way at a dinner party. Um, you're going to go in and basically if you find levator scapula, levator scapula attaches at the top of Darth levator, which is your levator or no, not levator, your shoulder blade your scapula, okay? So levator scapula elevates the scapula. It lifts the shoulder blade towards the neck. If you go into this junction down at a 45 degree angle, if I use fingers, that's very sharp. I'm just letting her know where I'm gonna put pressure. I wanna use something that's broad and just to show you just how versatile this is, I'm actually gonna dampen it just a little bit. She feels tight enough to me that I think if I just leaned in with my own, it would be a bit much. I'm gonna dampen this and come straight down there. How's that? Uh, so good. I'm gonna grab with the other arm so I have a little handle here. Now, from there, I'm gonna hold this hand static. If I go to the back or to the front, which one do you want? Mm, front. To the front, right there? Yeah. What if I give you some jostle with the other hand? Good. Good. Now, what if I lengthen you away? That's even better. That's even better. There we go. You want to stack body weight in a way that's comfortable, relaxed. If you get into a position for a while and you start to feel like you're straining, you have my complete permission to change it. Don't feel like you can't change it. Don't feel like you have to do it just the way I do it. Here's the problem. My tools are shaped differently than yours. And the way that you're going to make your body fit the person that you are working with will completely change the body mechanics. Now, if I go out towards the shoulder or in towards the neck, which one of those? Both are really good. Both. Now, I'm, when she says both are really good, I'm going to go back and forth. How's that? Great. There we go initiating just a little bit of movement. Now is the part that I tell you that clients will pay more for this if you start selling it in a way that it's not massage. It's increasing mobility. It's decreasing pain. It's a mobility service. It's a pain relief service. Right, oh, a little more forward or a little more back? Forward. A little more forward right there? Yep, right there. Okay, is that too much? Nope. Okay, what if I change the uh, angle there? Is that better? Uh, that's the same. Okay, good. Because she can't see that I'm able to move my arm over here and stretch and just kind of open my own chest and rotate in a way that makes me feel nice.
If uh, you're lucky enough to have a client who'd be cool enough with it, if you hold your cell phone with this hand, you could like take a selfie while you do it and put it on Instagram. But I'm not recommending you do that per se. I mean, you you know, don't get fired from your job at Massage Envy because you're having a good time while you're working. We wouldn't want that, and we certainly wouldn't want to promote Massage Envy on our ad here. But you know, just follow the rules in your establishment. I'm going to slowly back off again. How was that? Good. So this spot in particular, we were there for a little time. I'm going to start to go down into the neck. For some people, they're going to have their head back this way. When they have their head back this way, do you see that it kind of decreased the space that I could come in and apply pressure to the posterior cervical spine? What I want to be able to do is bring her head gently forward. That's going to create a little bit more length and I want to make sure to pull her hair out of the way because I don't want to catch individual strands and pull. For some people, in addition, I'm going to want to take their head and angle them down like they're looking down just a little bit more towards the table. The reason that I'm doing that is I'm trying to create more space to press into the posterior cervical spine. Trent is very angry right now because he wishes he was receiving this because mm -hmm. he's walking around with a camera and it's heavy. Right in there. Now, you taper as you go up towards the base of the skull at the occiput into the suboccipitals. I want to start at the larger, thicker portion at the base of the neck. So right here, before we were pressing into levator scapula into this junction at a 45 degree angle, now we're coming straight down into the posterior cervical spine, into that musculature. When you look at this from the outside, it can look like I'm getting close to the front. I'm not. I'm not anywhere near the SEM and I'm not anywhere near the carotid artery. I'm definitely in the back, in the posterior. And here's how this works. I'm gonna use this as a handle to create a little bit of space. So I've got her shoulder, I can move her around here. Sometimes I can grab with my forearm. How does that feel? Good. Now I've got this nice little handle where I can move her around. When I come to press in here, instead of using just a sharp ulna, I'm gonna to go to this broad, thick flesh of my forearm flexors in the posterior. But now, instead of the angle being down this way, the angle's down this way. I'm gonna hook right in there. How's that? Okay. Now, if I go down towards your feet yep. or up towards the head. Down. Okay, so right in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now to the back or to the front? Mm. Both are good. Okay. If I saw back and forth, does that work? Yep. Okay. I'm also, in this case, this is all based on feel. This is where you're going to play with multiple points of contact. This right arm feels like it's making sharp contact. I want something more broad, so I'm going to change it to grab a little bit more skin. That way I can completely relax my hands. Right. Ooh. Right in there. Oh. Oh. Right there? Yeah, no. There's, there's like a little bean in there. More down mm. or more up? Down. Okay. I'm always trying to relax and release my own tension. I usually don't spend a huge amount of time telling clients to breathe. One of the things I will do is if I feel like I'm holding tension somehow, is I will take a big in breath through my nose and then <sighs> Clients will inevitably hear that and realize that they're holding their breath and start to breathe while you're working on them. Either of these points of contact too much? No. Okay. I'm going to slowly back off. This time I think I'm going to leave the shoulder out. You can see there's just a little bit of therapeutic inflammation just right here where I was making skin contact. I'm going to move just a hair higher. 
Um, I might be able to get three points of contact on Heidi's neck. Some people are like a giraffe, they've got a little more space. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come just a little bit higher, right in there, how's that? There we go. And again, I'm pressing in the posterior, I'm definitely in the back. Am I going up or down? Trent, do you get any comments uh, rolling through your screen? No, I have to. Pull oh, okay. My phone. We'll just see if anybody's asking questions. If you guys have questions uh, while I'm working, just let me know. I'm happy to answer those on camera if we get a chance. We're not going to go much longer than an hour, uh, just for time's sake. But we want to do these trainings live, online, consistently. So the more feedback we get from you to make them better, it's gold for me. Most people want a static camera. A static camera. Now they, they don't want it they to move. This. I wonder why. Instagram, they want this. <laughs> Is it up or down? Still, down. Like a, Still down, right there. Yeah. There we go. What if I give you a little bit of back and forth? Back back. There you go. The problem is, is that we want to multi-purpose. The content is one of the most important things. So if we're shooting for Facebook, we still want to be with the, the mobile camera. So. Giving her a little bit of jostle. I've changed from the shoulder pressure into her forearm here. A little bit of forearm extensor work. Now we're making multiple points of contact. As I continue teaching, I start to talk about a primary position. And then we wind up doing primary, secondary, tertiary options in addition to that main core position. I'm going to grab here and create just a little bit of length. How's that? Mm. Yeah. Right there. When I would finish these sessions working at a chiropractor's office, the people could not believe what I had done and would say, I don't understand. This isn't even massage. And I'd say, oh, well, how do you feel? And they're like, dude, I feel amazing, but this is not like anything. I knew at that point that I was onto something when it came to clients and dealing with chronic pain. You can again see just a little bit of therapeutic inflammation a little bit higher. This time I'm going to go towards the base of the skull. This is getting towards the suboccipitals. It's also getting towards the insertions of trapezius and the muscles that go up like levator scapula. I think it's into one, two, three, the top four cervical vertebra, I think. So I'm going to go up right into here, right at the base of the skull. Still in the posterior, how's that? There we go. I'm gonna give her a little bit of space at the arm. Do you want more pressure forward? More pressure back? Four maybe? Okay, a little bit further forward right there. There we go. Now, I can grab this and still create a little more space. How's that? There we go. Do you want pressure up towards the head? Or you want down towards the feet? Oh, they're both really good. Both really good. When they're both really good, I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going towards the top of the head with my left forearm, then down towards the feet, up towards the head, slowly down towards the feet. If I'm hooked right there, do you want more pressure to the front, more to the back? Mm -hmm. The front. Okay, we got a question. Right in there. What do we got? Are you feeling more contact with your forearm flexors in the edge of the bone? So I'm using a mix of my ulna and my forearm flexors. The forearm flexors are going to be broad, a little softer as I'm working towards the base of the skull and we've softened her up, softened her up. I can get a little more specifically into the ulna. The ulna is going to be sharper, it's dense, it's bone, right? It's going to be a little more brutal in some ways. The challenge is your body and your arms are shaped differently than mine. If I hold that point of contact, how's the jostle here? Sorry. There we go. 
Do you prefer that to that slow movement? Uh, just different? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I just change it up just so it feels different to me. I'm going to still hook right where I'm at here. How's that? Good. There we go. Now I'm going to slide through the forearm extensors right there. You can probably see the other hand moving a little bit. Thank you. There's another question. Uh, yeah. Where do you sign up for classes? Do you travel when you teach table tie? So you can sign up for classes on my website, robertgardnerwellness.com. We're working on altering my store in the coming weeks so things are a little bit more clear and concise. I do travel. Travel is expensive. I can press a button on my phone and live stream to the entire world, or at least the people who are on Facebook, which only make up about a one quarter to one third of the human population. So how about I teach you online live for $7 a month? Because that's what we're doing. It's called the Reboot Insiders Club. Now, I wrote 700 pages of sequence manuals and nine DVDs of content. After I wrote all of that, I needed more. So I started going into my studio, turning on my camera, and now doing live streams directly for you to teach you everything that I do from the ground up. How do you talk to clients? How do you deal with your Instagram account? How do you set up your website? How do you set up your YouTube channel? How do you make videos? How do you deal with people having carpal tunnel syndrome, people having plantar fasciitis, helping people in chronic pain and building your practice from the ground up? I do travel and teach. Feel free to contact me. I'm happy to. Typically, I need classes to be sold out with 10 or more students to be able to make it lucrative enough to be worth my time. I've got my thumb right in Heidi's suboccipitals. Now, do you want more to the front or more to the back? Uh, I don't want to choose. You don't want to choose, okay, because she wants this portion of the session to be about one hour on this side. And then she flips over and we do another hour. And then we spend the last hour just working on her legs and feet just to smooth it out. And that session's three hours long, which is my typical, typical session length on a mat. I'm going to hook right there. How's that? That's intense in a good way. In for, reinforced thumb. I'm not hyperextending. It's safe, easy on my finger. I'm not going to hold this very long. I'm going to give her a little more length. How's that right there? Mm -hmm. That's good. There we go. Think pin and stretch. So I will include that link to the Reboot Insiders Club, that subscription service. When you are done with this video, again, there's going to be a link down below to the subscription service. There will also be a link for your free CE credit. You have to go to Teachable, take your little five question class to get your CE credit and your certificate. How's that, Heidi? Uh, what about uh, this? I've never heard this question before, but... If I seem like I'm not doing a move right and I've signed up for the club, can I send you a personal video of me doing te the technique so you can tell me what I'm doing wrong? Yes. The long-term goal is this. You're going to get a tripod. You're going to set up your tripod in your studio or in a room in your home uh, or your studio. You're going to Facebook Live with me in our private Facebook group and I'm going to work with you interactively online to answer that question. I'm trying to use video production and the technology to reach out to you right where you are to be able to oh, reach into your client's oh, suboccipitals right there. <laughs> Heidi's dying. And I'm going to take some pressure off. My hands are starting to get tired. It doesn't mean I don't use my hands, but I use them in a, a way that's, I think, a little bit easier uh, for me to deal with. Here's another issue that I see. Uh, people in sideline, we can deal with the temporalis. We can deal with head and neck pain. Sometimes people having headaches, if they brux and grind, uh, if they have TMJ issues. A lot of people will have issues with their temporalis, which is over their temple. It's a big muscle that goes down underneath, makes me sound professional, the zygomatic arch, just means your cheekbone, and it inserts on the mandible. It's a main workhorse in addition to your masseters and chewing, but if I come right up here, I'm gonna work into those muscle fibers I'm giving her a break from that deep compression we were doing. I don't have any issue with that, but if you compress, 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 deep, 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 it doesn't feel as gentle 
Um, it doesn't feel as nurturing. I'll often do like a compression and then test using mobility, using a little bit of uh, mobilization, just to be able to soften a person and not feel like their nervous system is overwhelmed. Ooh, we found it right there. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Cairo Vicente, that little booger. <laughs> little helmet wearing kid. What is he doing? Oh, giving mom tension right there. Mm -hmm. Right in there. Uh, I do great body work, horrible hair. Uh, if you partner with a hairdresser, it's probably a good idea. So going back away from temporalis, we did something that was just nice, kind of soothing to be able to give her a little bit of a break. She just took this big, long, extended breath because she's relaxing from what we just did. I'm going to go back into that position where I was kind of draped or working around the arm because I want to get into another muscle called serratus anterior. Mm -hmm. And serratus anterior causes a lot of people uh, uh, pain and suffering. Apparently Heidi is familiar with this muscle. <laughs> <laughs> And what happens is serratus anterior, if you see bodybuilders where they flex, you can see that inner digitation that happens here. It's from, is it their lateral obliques? And then serratus anterior where they enter digitate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this guy again just to dampen the pressure because she looked like she was grumpy from uh, what I was saying I was gonna work on. I'm gonna place this down so she's covered and I'm right here along the rib cage. To be able to apply pressure, I'm going to come in and hook my forearm. Now, do you want a little higher or a little bit lower? Maybe higher? Maybe right there? What do you think? Yeah, okay. So. Now, I'm going to allow her arm to just drape over mine. I like when their forearm just goes in this little crook at my elbow. I can reach over and get this as a handle so that I can start to mobilize the shoulder blade on top of the rib cage. Now, is it when I go up or down? I feel it more coming down. Okay. So if I'm going down, tell me when you want me to stop. There she okay. Is. Now, do you want me to go forward? Uh, mm -hmm. The eyebrometer went off or to the back? Forward. Okay. I'm going to go to the front. You'll notice that I'm giving her an option but I'm not making a judgment about where she wants to feel pressure. A lot of people are having problems with their shoulder blade being forward because serratus posterior is pulling the scapula forward. It's kind of a hidden muscle that even I have had problems with, but we don't get to it often because when the person is prone to serpine, ah, you have to go in from the side. Whereas if you stack the person on their side, you can sink down and easily access this muscle in a way that you wouldn't normally because you don't spend a lot of time with people in sideline if you're like a lot of the therapists that I work with when I'm teaching CE classes. How's that right there? Do you prefer the jostle yeah. to holding static? Yeah. Okay. So little jostle here. I can again hook around the arm. I want to go a little bit higher. How's that? Oh, right there? Yeah, it's like rock for you out there. Right there? Okay, is it too much where my arm is? No. There we go. And again, pressure up or pressure down? No, it's pressure down. Right pressure down, there. right there. There we go. I like giving the client options. Fundamentally, we'll see debates in the pain science community, but what I tell people is I'm a big fan of compression. When I say compression, people think I mean pounds per square inch. And then when I say, I stretch skin, they think it's the lightest pressure imaginable. No, not in my case. In my case, I'm always gonna use the amount of pressure that makes Heidi feel engaged in her nervous system. She's gonna go, ooh, what's that right? Like it's got her focus, but it's not to be painful and it's not really to be uncomfortable. I don't want to put people in pain. I'm trying to help them out of pain by increasing awareness first. When I hook in, what about a little movement? Yeah. There we go. Little small circles. In my case, from my direction, I'm going counterclockwise just to hook into here. 
a little bit of movement, a little bit of down, a little bit of open. If I decide I want to reposition, I can lift up. I can even move this a little bit higher if I need to. And how's that there? And, uh, uh, uh. Now, a lot of people won't re report pain here, uh, by the way. You'll notice that when we started, I was touching in the back where she feels pain. If I went straight into this and said, oh, it's obvious, your serratus anterior, like that's, no. You, you have to make the client feel comfortable with where you're going to work and demonstrate your knowledge base in a quick, succinct way that allows them to trust you that you're going to work on the area that's bothering them. The reason I don't go, oh, that's ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with your back. It's all in the front. She won't trust me at all. If I go, hey, Heidi, are you hurting back here? She immediately feels heard. Immediately. And that sort of emotional, psychological resonance with your clients is a big part of the rebooking process. So, right there. Mm, I feel like it's more where you move that way. A little more forward? Yeah. Now, when I'm right there, do you want the jostle there? Yeah. There we go. So, here's what I might tell Heidi as we continue working. Heidi, my guess is it's been about 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. The hour's over. She hasn't taken her clothes off. We're not doing what our culture thinks of as massage, but it's very deeply effective for pain relief and for increasing mobility. Typically what I would have done is about 10 minutes, flip her over, do another 10 minutes, and then say, Heidi, do you want to keep doing what we're doing? Or do you want to undress and lay down and do Swedish and deep tissue? You'll notice that I gave the client the option. 90% of the people I worked with went, no, this is really great. I, like, what is this? And I went, oh, this is a Thai massage. That's kind of how I would introduce it to them. So they would accept it and kind of come along instead of feeling like there was a bait and switch. Now, if they do in fact like this, it means that I'm a standout in the facility I work in. It's going to be easier to get them to rebook because they're not getting this work necessarily from other therapists. How's that? And if I traction you down, uh -huh. oh, ooh, right there, there, there we go. <sighs> and slowly, I'm going to back off. I'm going to take my pillowcase back off again. And I'm going to go back to something we were doing earlier, which was having my foot along the sacrum. I'm going to mobilize her open again for kind of a last pass. Uh, how are we doing time-wise? About 15 minutes, okay. So I'm slowly, again, just isolating at her sacrum so she doesn't roll too far open. How's that? There we go. I'm gonna start to move my foot underneath the shoulder blade. Before we were right at the edge, I kind of had my foot turned this way. I'm gonna actually start to work my toes underneath her shoulder blade, bringing her leg to neutral, not her leg, her arm to neutral. And you'll start to see how her shoulder blade starts to roll over my sock here. I'm going to come just a little bit higher and you're going to see this. Do you see how her shoulder blade starts to roll over my foot? How is that Heidi? Is that too much pressure? Okay. I'm not trying to dig my toes in as much as I'm pulling her shoulder blade into me and receiving her body. So I'm gently going to pull her open and actually start to lift her right there, right there. If this feels uncomfortable for your toes, you're free to leave it out. How's that? Now, if I hook right there, you can see that she's rolled over my foot there. I'm able to jostle her up and down. How's that pressure? Perfect. Right there to the back. Yeah. Now I'm going to move, mobilize my own head and neck here. A little bit of mobility. Now I've got her lifted. I'm going to pull her arm 
And usually with a bent arm, I can start to use this handle to lift her. I can work on her forearm flexors and I'm sorry, extensors really, uh, as I lean and pull. Is that too much at the top where my big toe is? Nope. Okay. She likes the pressure and I lift and lift and lift. It's almost like lifting her off. I can move my foot just a little bit higher. Yeah, right there. Back and open, back and open, back and open. How was that, Heidi? Not too much? Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to change her position. I'm going to put her back in supine. This would be nearing or going towards kind of the end of the session. We've had her inside lying this whole time just on one side. Normally, I would make sure to work both sides. For the sake of the demonstration, I felt like I could show you more by just working one side, leaving Heidi totally in balance so she feels like she walks in a circle whenever this is over. <laughs> but I'm gonna take the bolster out and I'm gonna have her lay on her back. I'm gonna take the pillow uh, out as well. And then I'm gonna do just a little bit of work on the opposite shoulder, uh, the one that was down. You can probably notice if you look at her shoulders from this angle, Tell me if it looks like this shoulder actually looked like it's rolled out and away compared to the other. I guarantee this guy looks like it's more lifted and kind of rounded forward. This one looks like it's rolled open and back. And it's because we helped open up the pec and pec minor on that side. Just to give her a little bit more balance, I'm going to come to this side. This is a real common movement that I would use if somebody was even already draped. They've already got on my table, they're face up, maybe you start this way. They say, hey, I'm having problems with my upper back, but how do I access it when they're on their back? What I tend to do is this. I'm gonna bring her palm to their opposite shoulder and bring her forearm down. Now, Heidi, when I press down like that, is it okay for breast tissue? It's not uncomfortable? Okay. I usually check with women just to make sure. Sometimes uh, different parts of their cycle, I think, they could be a little tender, so I want to make sure. I'm using the humerus. Their upper arm bone is a handle. I'm really pressing the humerus down into her rib cage to lift this up. And as I lift this up, I'm hooking my fingers down right into the thoracic paraspinals and my fingers aren't really moving my fingers are just static and i'm moving her shoulder blade over my fingers right in oh 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 this is when you make horrible jokes because it's tender and you know that's the kind of guy i am when i'm in session for an hour just taunting someone do you want pressure a little higher or a little lower i think higher maybe a little bit okay Is that right there there we go. Now, what slowly happens is the person starts to let their shoulder blade go. We're jostling and mobilizing the shoulder blade over the thoracic spine. Being able to do that means that they're accepting the mobility and the fact that the shoulder blade isn't glued onto the rib cage. Sometimes the way to get them to unwind isn't to try to pull them open. Sometimes I'll actually pull them more further forward and then they recoil by going, oh, hey, that feels kind of nice. Right there. Uh, and then, oh, uh, right there. Uh -huh. oh. Now, if she were on the table and were draped, you can imagine that the sheet would be tucked under her arms so that she would still be completely covered. As a male therapist, this is also nice because I can avoid uh, breast tissue by pushing down and away to be able to access this area right in there yes 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 now i'm going to back off and we're just going to give her a little traction i'm going to give her a break for a second i've done this five finger interlaced grip to be able to grab right there to shake her out i'm going to give her a little bit of traction and i felt a little clunk was that your shoulder joint yeah, yeah i could feel that got two comments to... what do we got 
for you. Uh, one of the comments is, I recently found your page. I've truly learned so much in the following, in, following you in four weeks. I'll be signing up for classes and want to start using your work cool. in my sessions. I've been a therapist for 11 years. Nice. Wow. That's really nice. Thank you so much for the kind comments. Um, I'm hooking around the forearm extensors. Now, I'm using the arm as a handle to mobilize her shoulder blade again. Look at how like she's just all doing this yummy, undulating, <laughs> letting her neck go. Your clients will never do that. They're like Frankenstein. But what I'm doing is I'm going to try to lift her shoulder blade and reach around into the thoracic paraspinals again with a little jostle. I can change the angle and go, how about that? Oh my. Oh my. What about that? Yep. Oh yeah. Right in there. Oh. And then with both arms, hey, how's oh that? My. Oh yeah. Now, this is the reason I like clothed work because I can mobilize her and really get into this without fear that she gets a breeze and feels naked. It feels much more comfortable to me, especially working with women, I think. Another comment. Uh, yeah. I live in Asia and some might confuse this with a Thai massage given in Thailand. Yeah. I plan on explaining to my clients that it's a Thai massage with an American spin on it. Yeah. That being more gentle than a standard Thai massage. <sighs> so I've never been to Thailand and here's what I hear. Uh, Heidi has more experience of this since she is Thai or at least part Thai. Yeah, right. um, and then in Thailand, you got to rough them up. The, the, the ties, that's what I always hear. You gotta rough them up, right? Yeah, I feel like that's what is expected when you go in there. It doesn't have to be like that, but that's typically the American view on yeah. the massage. It feels yeah. rough. Um, what I do is I just adapt it to my cultural environment. If I was too forceful, the clients don't let go. Um, I think also, in some instances, advanced practitioners change and develop over time and make the art their own. I find that I get more results by Americanizing it and making it fit the cultural context that I'm dealing with with clients in addition to what they're asking for. I'm gonna flip, and yes, every time I do this, I make this little galloping sort of thing just because it's fun. And I'm gonna come over to the other side, give her a little bit of space, give her a little bit of space. Now, again, to get your CE credit, you will have to follow the link below when I post it. You're going to take five little questions on Teachable. You're going to kick out your certificate. I'll also provide a link oy, oy, to the forearm extensors, no, to the uh, Reboot Insiders Club so you can subscribe to our service. There are 300 plus hours of my class recordings from the past two years already there. I'm trying not to kill Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring you up and over. I'm going to grab maybe at the elbow here. And how's that right there? Good. There we go. Hooking around. Not, hooking around. Not hooking uh, around. Oh, hey, what's up, mom? <laughs> hey, everybody, if you're there, say hello to my mom, Miss Liz. I love my mom. I'm thankful that my mom is around so I can try to make her famous on the interwebs. <laughs> right there. How's that? There we go. Now you'll notice that I'm also blocking the table. She knows that I'm leaning up against the table here, so it's not going to cause any problem where the table is going to fall over or I'm going to pull her off. Again, Reboot Insiders Club, $7, 300 plus hours of video footage. We have four workbooks and DVDs, which is another 700 pages of sequence manuals and nine DVDs of content. And we're going to continue putting out more information over time. Typically in the Reboot Insiders Club, we upload new content every week. We're trying to do more of this online interactive instruction. That's what I'm most interested in. I'm going to lift Heidi's head just so I can get her hair out of the way and give her just a little bit of light traction. I'm just gently holding onto her head and neck. I'm going to use the fingers just to slide along the paraspinals in the back here. But I would love to hear from you if you incorporate these into your sessions. 
I would love to find out from you how your clients respond to it. Most of those in our private Facebook group that goes along with the subscription, they tell me glowing things about how we're changing their practice for $7 a month. They're having clients that completely freak out. They rebook much more frequently. They're also getting larger tips by doing work that stands out that is extremely effective for upper back and neck pain. I'm gonna hook my hand underneath. How's oh, that right there? There we go. Giving a little bit of length primarily to the left side of the thoracic paraspinals. It's all up through the neck there. Do you want a little more pressure, Heidi? Yeah, I'll take it. A little bit more that way. Ooh. Right at your edge there. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Big in breath for me. As you exhale, tuck your chin just a little bit. There you go right to her comfortable edge. I'm gonna lower her back down and go ahead and switch sides. I'm gonna hook the arm under right there. How's that? Okay, a little bit more, right? Is that too much? Nope. Nope, right there. and lowering her back down again. I can always repeat any pieces of that that I care to. Um, I'm always gonna communicate with the receiver just to find out you know, what they're looking for, tailor the session to them. I tend to teach sequences initially just to get the therapist started. Once you de develop a level of mastery, you start to improvise using your body and the client's issues. I'm gonna go ahead and strip out the other side, right in there. If I want, I can use the uh, fingertips to kind of hook into the suboccipitals on both sides. How's that right there, Heidi? Really good. There we go. I'm just making nice something a little bit softer towards the end of the session. You can see that this has gone, uh, if I'm correct, it is an hour, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done this for an hour. We mostly worked on one side. It's why my sessions kept getting longer and longer. What I wound up getting was very dedicated clients who absolutely loved uh, the work that I was doing. They had a higher rebook rate. I was making more money. I was saving my hands. And we just kept building and growing. If you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out. Again, remember, there's gonna be a link down below that I will post soon so you can get your free CE credit. You just take a couple little tests or a couple little questions that you'll answer on Teachable. We also have retail packages and things available on Teachable along with that subscription service. I'll provide the link to that so you can check some stuff out. And right towards the end, I'm gonna hold Heidi's head in my right palm and just press her shoulder down and away. How's that Heidi? It's good. And then I'm going to lift her and give just a little bit of twist and length. How's that? Mm -hmm. There we go. Try not to pull hair. And again, back to this side. Usually, as I would get towards finishing a session, I would have a tendency to just lengthen and traction and hold and just say something like, Heidi, listen, thank you so much for the session. It's really uh, great working with you. Listen, based on what I've seen, I think you're just having some you know, tight muscles we can work on. I would really love to see you in a week to two weeks to go ahead and kind of get the bulk of this to go away. Um, after that, I think based on what we found today, you would just be at maintenance. You're just having like a little bit of upper back and neck pain that we could pretty easily resolve. That from the beginning of the session to the middle of the session to the end of the session creates a situation where we're trying to funnel her into a package of sessions or returning and rebooking. 
Um, it's not a high pressure sale. I don't feel like a used car salesman trying to force her. Usually what I find is therapists aren't actually educating the customer about the benefits of coming back for the massage regularly. It's kind of like, oh, well, the massage is over. Bye. Um, you want to create a situation where she understands, hey, listen, it was great to work with you. I really love working with you. You know, if I can do anything else for you, let me know. Um, in addition, I will usually give people like a link to my YouTube channel to give them like little things they can do to stretch or like work on themselves, which I continue producing videos like that. But uh, thank you so much for the session today, Heidi. And I really, really appreciate it. Uh, to all of you, uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Again, you will get one hour of free CE credit. Once I put that link up, feel free to share that in Facebook groups to your friends, uh, whoever may be looking, who are massage therapists. It's really great for me to be able to educate this way. And in addition to the link to Teachable to get your free CE credit, we're going to include the link for the subscription service and our retail packages. If you have any questions for me, let me know, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much.